welcome to the Built on Air podcast, the variety show for all things Airtable. Each episode, we cover four different segments. It's always fresh and different and lots of fun while you get the insider info on all things Airtable. Our hosts and guests are some of the most senior experts in the Airtable community. Join us live each week on our YouTube channel every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And join our active community at builtonair.com slash join. Before we begin, a word from our sponsor, OntoAir.com. Any business running on Airtable gets the value that Airtable has, but also needs a few more functions to complete their operations. That's where OntoAir comes in. It's a suite of tools for any business running on Airtable to maximize your operations efficiencies and automations. One customer, John, states that OntoAir enables his business to function properly without having to think about building their own software. And that is pretty invaluable. The OntoAir Airtable apps are amazing and we use them often and are very happy with the results. So join John and hundreds more customers and take your Airtable to the next level with OntoAir. Sign up today with promo code BUILTONAIR for a 10% discount. Check them out at OntoAir.com. And now let's check out today's episode and see what we built on air. We are live. Welcome to the Built on Air podcast, season 10, episode seven. Good to be with you live this Tuesday morning. I am Dan Fellers. With me is our regular hosts, Ali Alosa and Camille Parks. Welcome. Hello. Good to have you both with us again. And we have special guests with us, Cherry. Cherry, good to see you. Great to see you. Glad you could. That's Cherry. Cherry, good to see you. Great to see you. Glad you could be joining us. We'll learn more about Cherry and what she's up to a little bit later on in the show. As always, the Built on Air podcast, we spend about an hour going through all things Airtable. And it's always four segments. I'll give a quick run through of what we'll be talking about today. We always start with round the bases to see what's going on in the Airtable communities. Then we'll do a spotlight on our primary sponsor, On to Air. Then we'll learn more about Cherry and what she is up to as an expert in Airtable. And then Cherry will walk us through a, a new, this is actually a new segment that we added, more kind of a general overview of an entire base. So a base showcase talking about uh, operations within a production company. And then we'll do a quick spotlight on our community built on air. And then finally, Camille will walk through another base showcase on a project management and how to do timing and things. And that will wrap up our show for today. So with that, let's get started on round the bases, see what's going on. Welcome to our regular listeners. Good to have you with us. Let's start. Uh, I saw this on Sunday. So I believe Sunday was the 10 year anniversary of Airtable's launch. So 10 years ago, uh, Sunday, so this week, Airtable launched. So who here was the first to use Airtable? Probably not me. Uh, I would say probably you, Dan. I did. I, I joined in 2017. I think I was 2017 as well. Mm. Yeah. Jerry? I think it's been 2016, 2017. All right. Yeah, I started using it definitely four or five years ago. Okay, Jan, 2015. So he's the front runner. If you've used Ooh. it before 2015, let us know. I'd love to see somebody who used it in like 2012, 2013, what the original uh, interface looked like. Let me zoom in on this picture. Uh, that's not a very good picture, but I think this was the original. I don't know if this, this doesn't look like the original. I feel like I've seen it's older not. versions. It, yeah. they, it, they had a very line style, if that makes sense, um, where it wasn't like a, I don't know how to describe it, but um, yeah, a lot has changed in those 10 years. Like uh, apps weren't a thing when people first launched. Of course, automations weren't a thing. Um, there's yeah, field yeah. types like last modified by and created time and stuff, all of those came after launch, so yeah, no yeah. apps, no apps, yeah, yeah. So, the very first, but it did have the linking. I don't think it the, the core base, um, you know, I'm sure they've touched up the CSS, the styling, but 
I think, you know, it's always been multiple bases. I don't think there works. I think they had workspaces from the get go. If I, from as long as I've used it, I imagine that's been there. So kind of the core hasn't changed a whole lot. So anyways, happy birthday to Airtable 10 years going strong and we shall see what the next 10 years are in store for Airtable. Um, big stuff there. So it is crazy to think that 10 years is kind of a long time in the software world, but there's still, still a lot. Uh, so I put Airtable maybe in the teenager, you know, space as far as maturity level and, and, uh, room for growth. <laughs> Certainly. Yep. So, all right, next one. Um, last week, there was a table talk with Peter Dang, who is the chief product officer, I believe, at Airtable. Mm -hmm. And with Aaron on, on table talk, um, love to get your guys' thoughts on it. I'll highlight, um, if you want a really good review, Chris Dancy on Reddit gave a summary. He probably also posted this on Facebook. Um, so if you want a summary of what they talked about, this was the best summary I saw out there from Chris. Also, uh, if you subscribe to Base Notes uh, by All About That Base, uh, they included as part of their uh, newsletter a summary as well. Awesome. So yeah, thank you. That's for with Justin. Mm -hmm. So thoughts on what he had to say? Um, it, it was very positive. Um, one thing that I appreciate about it is I think Aaron asked a question, something to the effect of what was a time where um, Airtable got feedback and then made changes in response to that feedback. And Peter's example was the expanded record preview, which is a very recent incident that's still going on. Um, so that means to me that the feedback about it not being the most beloved change uh, that Airtable has made has reached the chief product officer. And that was the first example that he gave. And I don't think that question was on the list of pre-prepared questions. Like they might've talked about it beforehand, but like it was offered as the example. And so, you know, that's nice to hear from our side is that this kind of information when it's a big enough problem reaches chief product officer level. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. No doubt. It's definitely something that impacted everyone across the board. Sometimes yeah. I would get on fo uh, phone calls with the client and then they would show me something that they had built inside of Airtable and they were trying to edit a record. And I could just see the expression on their face as they opened it and they were saying, did you do this, Cherry? Why is that wrong? <laughs> All of a sudden it's changed or what happened here? So definitely saw that feedback in real time from... Yeah. Come on, says, feel like... It wasn't a good example for me. There were better examples in the past. I would agree. Uh, but it was a recent example um, and an ongoing example, which is why I particularly liked him mentioning it just because it was like, hey, we hear you. They still haven't made any adjustments. Maybe they're working on it behind the scenes. But, you know, if if there were a person to say, yes, I know that this is an issue and we're working on it, you know, that would be the guy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think the the themes that, that mentioned, he talked about obviously data being core um, to what they're doing. So trying to make it easier, simplicity and um, alignment. So those are those are some of the the themes that they talked about. Um, interfaces was huge. They said there's lots more to come on interfaces. Um, interface designer, um, Kavan also talked about some other examples um, that might have been better. But he also, I think I can't. I think he mentioned how long he had been at Airtable. I think it's only been a year, maybe a little bit longer. But he's relatively new. Mm -hmm. So he he doesn't have the full history that Kavan has of of mishaps from Airtable. So he's learning about a year is what Kavan said. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, so really good. Nothing like groundbreaking. He didn't showcase any, he didn't show any like new features that were coming. I, that's what I was hoping for is like, 
take a sneak peek at what's coming, you know, an interface or something like that. But um, so, yeah. you know, it does, it is good to kind of see where their head is at as far as where their, their focus and attention is. Um, Gen generally it was structured as these are the product areas that we'll be updating in 2022 mm -hmm. and yeah. not, you know, sometime in quarter two, we're going to add blank. Yeah. It wasn't really that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious about the question number three around simplicity. How do you take thinking out of the product? That seems a little bit counterintuitive to me. I wasn't at the session. What did you guys think? I think they're trying, uh, what he was trying to get at is, Air, he mentioned in the um, table talk is that Airtable is used by so many different people for so many different, wildly different use cases. And so, you know, without remembering the whole session in perfect detail. I think what he was getting at is that how do I, how do I use this general software to adapt to my needs without having to like sit down and, you know, draw a map of things together. You should probably draw a map if you have a complex <laughs> system, a large system. But I think he's saying like, how do I make it intuitive to use it for many different use cases? Yeah, yeah I would agree. I would think a lot of when I first see people like pick up Airtable and learn how to use it, like the stuff, namely like around linked records and figuring out how that works, just, I, I find it very intuitive, but if you're not like computer driven or like don't have a ton of computer experience, then you might find it a little confusing. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there, there's, I think it's worth listening to hear what he has to say. Mm -hmm. Permissions, they definitely, um, they definitely know that permissions is a shortcoming. So it, that was good to hear him talk about like they, they want to get it right. So they're not trying to just get something out there without making sure they get it right. So that hopefully they do get it right. And hopefully that's something soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, some more feedback there from Kavan. Yeah. Any, any final parts, thoughts before we move on? Well, I think on the how do you take the thinking out of the product piece, it's interesting because I would think I would frame it depending on the role, because for the person who's building and setting up the Airtable, they have to think very strategically about how the database is laid out, yeah. whereas the person who might be using it day to day and is just entering data, that's a very different use case and experience and the less thinking they need to do the better <laughs> yeah right right for sure yeah they're kind of and they're kind of two users in that case that they have to worry about <laughs> all right let's move on so speaking we got chris uh mentioning here so chris posted chris is one of the moderators along with uh ben green on and maybe some others um Ali, you might be a moderator in this group in the Fair Airtable community in, in Facebook. So he made a pre-announcement coming on Wednesday. So just kind of spot like that. There's some rumblings of what it might be. Um, so I just want to give a shout out. Sounds like there's something coming from the Facebook community on Wednesday from Chris and Ben and, and the team there. So um, I believe... It, I, I'm assuming they'll announce it on their show, which I think will be Wednesday um, in the evening. So feel free to uh, to listen in on that and hear what the big announcement is from Chris. Exciting. Yeah, that'll be good. I'm excited to hear that. I was actually on their show, their last one, two weeks ago. So that was my first time joining them there. So that was fun. So oh. shout out to the uh, Facebook group there. All right. Speaking of um, the new, the new, uh, the new pop-up designer expanded view, uh, somebody Andy Lynn, um, I think he created this a long time ago, uh, like back in January. It looks like I guess that's not that long ago, but then he updated it. So I guess he, I guess this was created specifically, but then he added some more. So. If you are missing, if you want to kind of like improve the experience, um, this is what it, let's see. 
So he created, yeah. So you have to create, you have to install a, um, uh, a, a Chrome extension. It's not his extension. I think there's a standard one that allows you to like insert CSS onto the page oh, and okay. then you copy the CSS that he created and it will allow you to, to modify the designer to be more like what they should have done from the get-go <laughs> when you made this change. That's interesting. Yeah. So if you, actually this one is more like the old version. So it's got above and below mm -hmm. instead of left, right. So if you miss the old version and you want to see something closer to that, then here's a pretty cool hack to get that back. That's okay. interesting. Yeah, you could do that. So anyway, yeah, one must go. <laughs> Yeah, and Scott saying, you got to hire this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, shout out to Andy. Good work there for uh, putting that together. And um, hopefully, Jerry, if you've got people that are really upset, clients that are upset and want it back, that might be an option to check out. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So now we're moving on to the Built on Air community. Uh, this was kind of funny. Russell posted over here on the right uh, a fail from Airtable. So Airtable allows you to write Markdown, Markdown, or if maybe it just converts. Um, is it Markdown that you can write in the field descriptions? I think you can now. Or is it, or it might just convert links or U URLs to be clickable. But the problem is, is like he mentions here is um, you can't click on this because once you move away from the icon, then it disappears. So you highlight over it. And then by the time you get down there, it's disappeared. So links are not usable in field descriptions, unfortunately. <laughs> so right. in similar, Justin pointed out in table descriptions as well. So mm -hmm. there's a funny little, if you get frustrated with that, you're not alone. <laughs> I just verified you can't do markdown. At least. markdown. So it just knows to convert URLs. Mm -hmm. So, and this was, uh, if you if you haven't seen Russell, he created a cool interface for um, Wordle. So if, I think his whole company does, does Wordle uh, as a team and they track all their scores and everything in, inside of Airtable. So pretty cool. That's hilarious. And he shared that with the community. I think we had it on a previous one, so. Check that out. Yeah, no markdown, Jan says. All right, one more from the Built On Air community. Um, this one is just our standard reminder of limitations on record limits. Uh, Ryan asking about, you know, what's the limit? How do you get more than 100K um, even on enterprise? So that's the limit. So uh, I know this comes up often and um, hopefully it's something that they address um, in the future. They got to figure out how to expand their record limits. But Ryan, it looks like adding three to 5,000 records a day, which is a lot. So yeah, if you're, if you're dealing with that much data, uh, Airtable is going to be a limiting factor. <laughs> Sadly. Yeah, so. The first space I ever built on Airtable was for a retail e-com company for one of my old jobs. And by the time I left that company, I think we had over 200,000 records inside of a single table. But this was before they put in plan limits and mm. any sort of restrictions. So once I realized in the newer basis that you started, you couldn't do that anymore. That was a... Huh. Definitely really frustrating for a long period of time. And was it super slow with 200,000? It was quite slow. We also had lots of different images in it. So yeah, it was sort of load. But in the views, in the filtered views, it wasn't too bad. Interesting. So yeah, so I think they can support it um, more. They, they got to get to at least a, a million, I think, to really be able to support enterprise customers yeah it one of the sort of frustrations with the move to um airtable being more enterprise centric or at least how, that's how it seems 
is that it doesn't, I have a hard time imagining a enterprise, a literal enterprise needing less than a hundred thousand records. Right. So, you know, if that wasn't the case, it'd be like, oh yeah, this is a totally reasonable thing for enterprises to buy. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So, so there's some options. Our friend Bill talks about if you need something to externally store, uh, archive your data, you can check out Firebase or any other kind of real database that can store a lot more data. Um, so yeah, you kind of have to start looking for ways to archive it. Um, the easiest hack that I tell clients about is creating like one field. Usually you have like a, a parent child relationship. And so let's say you have project and then you have tasks. Well, obviously you're going to have a lot more tasks than projects. And when a project is archived, uh, I, a lot of times I'll like take all of the tasks and just insert kind of a summary in one long note field of all of those tasks and then delete all the records of tasks. So that's one way where you can just kind of clean up, but still store it in Airtable um, at the project level and delete all the tasks to, to help uh, clean up your data. Yeah, that's good. I have a base. I've been syncing. There's one large table I have in a base that I like to clear out periodically and I sync it to a separate base and then I toggle it to leave deleted records in the other base. I just hit 50,000 records in that table after using that for like uh, maybe close to a year. And so then I just cut off the filter on that view and started a new table. <laughs> it's enterprise. Uh, so I'll have a hundred thousand and I'll have to just archive it in separate bases, I guess. Yeah. 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 That's another trick with the sync table feature. All right. Let's go on back to the Facebook community. Um, I think it's always good to talk about alternatives to Airtable. So somebody's asking, what are the good Airtable alternatives? I always like to see what people are talking about. Um, won't go through all of them, but if you're kind of in that boat of deciding if Airtable is right for you or hitting limitations and want to see what else is out there, this thread has a lot of um, options. A lot of people say, you know, really that they still want to stick with um, Airtable, but there's definitely other alternatives, <laughs> even Excel. You can go back to Excel. <laughs> yeah, I, that I, I read this actually this morning and the replies on that particular suggestion were kind of funny because somebody was like, I'm a data analyst and this made me cringe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no context to the question whatsoever. There's right. no sense about what they're trying to use Airtable yeah. for. Yeah. And and that's it's very important because um, if if your if your reason for moving away from Airtable is something like record limits, then the answer to you know what's a good alternative to Airtable? I need more records. That might be like just a regular SQL sort of database where you can have just an insane amount of records. But if um, you need or you want that sort of graphic interface that Airtable has, that's sort of the edge it has on all of its other competitors. Whereas, you know, the, um, we talked about them before, um, there's open source, more or less clones of Airtable that are on premises, but they give you unlimited records. Um, and I, no code DB, that might be one and baserow.io, I think. And then there was another one that are very similar in sort of look and feel of Airtable. There's a few sort of now core Airtable features that aren't included in those options because they're new, uh, but they give you unlimited records. So that's something to keep in mind. And I think this particular user somewhere in these comments mentioned that it was the pricing Right. was really the holdouts, not necessarily record limits. So someone else mentioned we could probably still use Airtable, get one license and then use Stacker or something like that to give individual access to certain data. So exactly. if you're asking for what is a good alternative to Airtable, you need a little bit more information um, about why it's not uh, the best for you. And Airtable isn't going to be the best for everyone. So you have to keep your sort of eyes on other options. 
Yeah, and it looks like in a later post here that I have highlighted, she says the reason is the pricing, 15000 a month for all users. So that's where. That's uh, a lot. That's a, that is a hefty chunk of change. And so, you know. <laughs> there are ways to work around it. But yeah. I mean, in that situation, yeah. where, I mean, Stacker is, you know, somewhat expensive for some teams for sure, but mm -hmm. it's worth it if you're going to be saving fifteen thousand dollars a year More than 15 a month yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean a month excuse me yeah. yeah 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 for sure so yeah knowing what else is out there a lot of a lot of other ones um i i had never heard of stack b or stack by before uh suggested by kenny and i just looked it up and it looks like pretty identical to yep. Airtable. like there's so many <laughs> Yeah, I don't know I, who came first. I'm assuming it's Airtable because it's the <laughs> biggest name. But my my goodness, just yeah. sometimes they don't even try. Yeah, C, yeah. I think C table is the most egregious. S E A table. Yeah, yeah. Even the name. Yeah, there's a lot of clones out there. Stack by actually, I think it's a European company. Um, actually, mm. has a pretty strong customer list and looks like a viable product. Um, yeah, very similar looking. <laughs> and then that's another thing. If you have a, if you're a European customer or client, they Europe has specific data security requirements that I'm not sure Airtable follows entirely. Mm -hmm. um, but also, Europe has a different set of formatting for data um, and information. We talked about it last week, I believe, like adding commas to numbers as uh, your decimal separator or you know, your, your dates is probably the, the biggest one and time zones and all that. So it might behoove you to find a, a product that is geared more towards European clients. So maybe that's a great option for not necessarily this person, but other people. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, I don't see people moving from Airtable to Salesforce. Usually it's the other way around, but mm -hmm. Salesforce is an option. Jotform is another one. So. Yeah. And and someone also suggested like ClickUp as a alternative to Airtable, and that contextually only really makes sense if you're using Airtable for project management. Yeah, you're yeah. using it for like a sales something, then ClickUp wouldn't really make too much sense. Yeah, very good. All right, let's do one more. We'll wrap up our round the bases. Uh, so this was a tweet from a Airtable employee. Thought this was interesting. Um, a couple of days ago, um, talking about the new. I'm going to assume. I'm making an assumption here that they're talking about the new. I don't know. Maybe it's a new. Uh, maybe it's a new feature we haven't seen yet. But I'm assuming this is related to the new expanded view. <laughs> And basically, it's a designer talk. This this look, appears to be like an internal chat amongst Airtable employees. Um, it's clearly from Zoom. So there was some sort of internal Zoom thing that they had. And this is the chat within it. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's was, something new. I don't know. <clears throat> that's Tim Dang. That's different, right? Peter Dang was the product officer. Uh, but it does look like him in the picture. Huh. Maybe... Mm -hmm. A brother? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Um, so maybe it's something to come, but uh, I wasn't a fan of the comments about this relating directly to their market cap. And <laughs> I don't want them. I don't know. <clears throat> Seems like that's where their focus is, is worrying too much a little bit about their market cap. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Something they're teasing. Uh, didn't get any response from anybody, but worth uh, pointing out that internally they're they're excited about something that um, I assume would be coming probably in the future. Yeah, so we'll see if we ever figure out what this is related to. All right, that concludes our round the bases. Um, one quick plug for Ontair. Ontair is a all-in-one toolkit to run your business on their table. It's a suite of apps that allow you to do a variety of different things. And today's spotlight, uh, I should have Cherry, with Cherry being on, Cherry is one of our uh, faithful customers and works with clients using Ontair. So 
I hope Cherry's a fan. <laughs> we actually did a uh, we actually did a spotlight on Cherry and how Cherry uses onto air and um, for for building invoices and things of that nature. I wasn't thinking. I should have highlighted your um, article that we wrote about you. But instead, I want to just do a quick plug for our on-air backups. And backups is best practice way to make sure that your data is stored outside of Airtable. So if you are running your business on Airtable, then you likely um, want to make sure that you have your data stored outside of Airtable. Yes, Airtable does archive and do backups of their own, of their own but industry best practice is to make sure that you're storing that data outside of the original source. And that's where Ontario Backups comes in. It allows you to back it up to either Google Drive, Box, or Dropbox, depending on what you're already using for your data storage. And we'll store your all your data in CSV or JSON format, along with your attachments. So anytime new attachments come in, they will automatically get stored over into your destination location. So check out Ontario Backups and see if it makes sense for your business as well. All right, Cherry, I'm gonna hand it over to Ali, who's got a couple questions about for you. Uh, sure. Yay, well, Cherry, we're super excited to have you with us today. So you've been a fixture in the Airtable community for a couple of years now, at least, maybe even a few to five, maybe, you said 2017, right? So how uh, how did you discover Airtable? I discovered Airtable at one of my previous jobs. It was working at a retail company. I was talking to you about that base where we had over 200,000 records. So that's really where I got my first introduction. The product was very, very different back then. I always appreciated the linking and ability to have attachments. It just made it really easy to have all your data in one place, which is awesome and something that a lot of businesses appreciate. And then really started just loving Airtable so much, talked to all my family and friends about it, and um, then started freelancing. And now I am founded AirOps Consulting to really help businesses and any types of organizations reach their potential with smarter database solutions. It's exciting. I've been seeing you everywhere all over the place recently. Like Dan mentioned, you've been in that in an article about uh, onto air and from OpenSide. Um, and you also, I think, did a series on a CRM on YouTube. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, that was a while back. It's definitely hard to record. <laughs> it feels incredibly difficult to release videos that, you know, or sometimes I don't feel like meet my standards and then other times the product is changing. So I'm like, I don't want to release something that's gone out of date. So hopefully I'll record more videos soon. I agree. It's super difficult, right? Mm -hmm. But you've definitely did a really wonderful job with those. I look forward to seeing more. Um, is there like a, a particular, I know this is a silly question in, in a way because Airtable is so flexible, but like, do, do you find yourself gravitating towards the same type of projects or the same industries? You know, I think everyone starts to build their niche. Um, but, you know, some people work very closely with financial companies, other people focus on geography. We primarily focus on North American clients. We've got global clients everywhere around the world. I think we're on six continents now, so that's very exciting. Uh, but from an industry perspective, I've really worked with many different types of industries, anywhere from retail to nonprofits to um, production companies, which we'll talk a little bit more about later today, and um, financial services, professional services and technology, so all sorts of companies. It is very flexible, so I find the core of it is really when you're getting consultants, we help you with the strategy in the beginning, mm -hmm. and that's the most valuable part of working on engagement together. 
I think so too, right? Getting the structure down is is probably the most important of like starting to build that app, getting that structure mm -hmm. right can go so far in the long run. Yeah, exactly. And it makes everything so much more scalable. I always have people reaching out to me when they say, you know, help me fix my automations. And then we look at their face and the actual problem is their architecture, not the automation itself. Exactly. I have not even seen this. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have a little bit for sure. <laughs> It's great to see the light bulb come on where you're like, well, you could have just one automation if you put it all on the same table yeah. instead of 20. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's exciting. So, so what's next for AirOps Consulting? Yeah, I'm in the process of building a website, rebuilding our website at the moment. So that will hopefully launch uh, towards the end of March. And I'm really looking forward to that. That's very exciting. Well, I'm looking forward to see your demo today. And where can uh, listeners go to see more about you and AirOps Consulting? Yeah, you can come to our current website, which is airopsconsulting.org. We have some information about how we work, some resources that they can find, uh, some blogs about past uh, success stories with our clients. So that's your... A uh, place to find information and also book an introduction call with me. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Terry. Pleasure. Awesome. I, I had a quick question. What, um, at your last business when you first were in, did you bring Airtable into your the company or was it already there and you kind of had to learn it? So it was built by my manager. He was really just tinkering by himself. And then eventually uh, I became the owner for it. I always tell people you have great job security if you own the, your Airtable database <laughs> because it can never. <laughs> fire yeah, you. very true. And your background was not technical, right? What was your yeah, background and training? Right, that's right. I attended a business school at Richard Ivy here in Canada. It's a, a very business focused program and. I really got more on the technical side when I started working at startups and I worked at a couple of retail startups. So that's really where I got uh, the technical side. And I find a lot of clients appreciate that I come from a back technical, sorry, operations background because I can understand their business a little bit better. And like we were talking about earlier, the strategy side of databases is all about the context. Even when you're asking questions like, what's an alternative to Airtable? Well, it's impossible to answer that question without knowing what is the problem. So that's the nice thing about having the business acumen and also understanding the technology aspects. Very cool. Yeah. All right. If you want to share your screen, great. We'll move on to yours. Thank you. It's great to meet with you. And it's awesome. I love hearing these stories of people that, you know, are not technical, maybe aren't, you know, hadn't had that experience and mm -hmm. just how easy it is to grow from not having any of that background to now being one of the industry experts in just a few years. So that's awesome to hear. So we're going to showcase, Cherry, you're going to yeah. walk through a, a base showcase Definitely. on production operations. Let me share yeah. your screen. Go for it. Perfect. Great. Let me make this a little bit larger so people don't have to get too close to the screen. All right. So like we were saying earlier, context is really, really important. Um, I'm showing a production management databases. Actually, I'm showing three production management databases. And the way I think about this is I love working with clients in entertainment, whether they're building a conference or doing films or uh, creating commercials and advertisements because it's such a dynamic industry. Mm -hmm. And every single database that we've built looks very, very different from each other because every organization will have different processes. So, you know, when you're thinking about production, there are so many elements from 
the creative aspects, then actually filming, then post-production and editing. And that's just actually creating the content. And then before that, you have, you know, you submit an RFP to win a project. So there's definitely a sales element to it. And you also need to keep track of all of your different contacts as well, because there's vendors that you hire, there's different equipment rental companies, there's creatives that um, might be freelancers, and there are, uh, let's say, stars in Hollywood that you might be working with. So we're going to be looking at a few different databases. I don't have interfaces or apps built on top of any of these. It's really to look at a structure of how a business could be run for a production company. So the first one we'll look at is our master contacts database. Uh, if you don't know, you can add an emoji at the beginning of your base, and that will be the little icon in your Airtable. So to make it'll help make it more visual. I love doing that. <laughs> So we've got a list of companies. There's also your talent roster and your internal team members and the internal teams. So if when we're thinking about a production company, there's so many different people in this space, right? You might have people who own agencies, you might have managers at agencies, you might have vendors, etc. all types of people. So you can put all your companies in one table and then, uh, you know, filter them, base, filter them based on the type of company to make it really easy for your team to look at information. You can also create a talent roster. So there are different people who uh, might be editors who do post-production for you and you might capture some sample work that they might have done before. You might have musicians um, with their musical genres. So, you know, the views are really awesome to be able to help you show information that's really relevant for people. And the reason why I focus so much on this stuff is because you really want the most relevant people to see the most relevant information. I think there's lots of different things you can do on top of Airtable, but at its core, we're really focusing on the strategy and the architecture of the base. And then you can display information in different ways, which is really helpful for your team if they're creative and very visual individuals. And then you can track your internal team members and um, let's say you have in-house salespeople, you have uh, creative managers and directors and producers who work for you. Obviously, none of these names are real. They're just copied lists from Google. <laughs> anyway, and also internal teams. Any questions, comments so far? I like that you put, I, I often also put uh, the team members and other contacts on separate tables because I like to be able to link my team members to my contacts and it gets so difficult if you're doing a self-linking table mm -hmm. and you can't really, I mean, it's possible, but that is typically what I do. I, I always advise people to always put people all in the same table unless they're your internal team and then you can have a separate table. <laughs> yeah, it definitely keeps things cleaner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Very cool. So this is our really our kind of centralized place for all of the contact data. And the reason why you could keep this separate is because there might be different teams that need access to this information. And you don't necessarily want the master contacts sometimes to live on the base that rests with just one team, because that means anytime when somebody needs to edit a contact and they have to go into the marketing team space and you'll all of a sudden have 10 people who work in marketing, but 50 people who need to edit their base from a day-to-day -day basis. So these are the kind of, uh, you know, design decisions that are really important to make in the very beginning. So mm -hmm. there is some thinking required. 
<laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, now we get into project RFPs. So this is, imagine you've got your all of your contacts maintained in one place. That's awesome. But really, we need to be able to use this data in order to sell our projects. So I've got confirmed projects and potential projects here. And the way I like to think about this is um, think about it like ideas or like RFPs or maybe um, yeah, maybe you have like ideas internally for an episode of a show that you want to do, or you might have RFPs that you're build that you're bidding on other uh, with other companies. So, with the potential projects, you might have all sorts of different uh, projects that you're bidding on. I don't think usually production companies have a little bit more of a niche, but might have a music video, a car commercial, maybe you're uh, doing some work for the Super Bowl that just happened. Uh, so you can monitor all of your statuses for your bids and you can look at the bid amounts that you've uh, captured just to understand from a a stakeholder perspective, if your sales director or the owner of the company wants to just look at, okay, what am I trying to bid on right now? Or what is the amount of work that we've accepted or that has been accepted? And I know that I've got 850K accepted. And um, if we group this based on the status, I think it's a little bit easier to see the amounts. So it just creates uh, very easy to understand bird's eye view so that people aren't pinging you on Slack trying to figure out, hey, what what are we doing next week? What do we have in the pipeline? All of it is uh, very easily accessible. And then you've got uh, once a project is confirmed or RFP is accepted, often what we do is we have triggers based on statuses and then automations that will carry potential projects into confirmed projects because the teams don't need to see every single project that we're bidding on. They would just want to see the projects that are in progress or we've won. So another element inside of Airtable is that it's very nice to be able to have um, project level reporting and tracking. So, um, you know, this could just be manually entered in, in terms of your RFP amount, your actual revenue, your actual cost, what is your profit, what is your margin, or you can do this uh, with a very complex uh, expense tracking base and roll everything up and summarize the actual costs with a calculation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one shout out for onto air. One of the things that you can also do is generate any kind of uh, RFPs or agreements or invoices with the click of a button. It's something that we've implemented for um, several different clients of ours, uh, both in entertainment and outside of it. Um, I've got an example to show, which is. Um, when we sign clients, I also don't create my agreements um, manually anymore. So this is our uh, template contract. And you can see I've got my fields highlighted that I want to map later on. And let's say we've won this, um, we've won this NFL project, then all of a sudden here, oh, here you can see that all of your data is automatically put in. And this takes about five to 10 seconds once you've got all the data in. And it just reduces the amount of errors that gets made. Like I definitely went through periods early on in my business where I would be creating this manually. And it took me half an hour to an hour to just review and double check everything. And sometimes there would be errors. So it's just so much faster and so much easier. And we've created all sorts of documents with Onto Air, which is um, really wonderful. Awesome. I love hearing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the last 
um, base that I wanted to show is confirmed project. So this is the actual production base. So we had your sales team work inside of the RFPs to sell the projects. And then the production team is working in a separate base because they need to see different information. So in terms of um, a project, every project could have different milestones for creative production, post-production, and then you can uh, include all of your shoot days in here in terms of, um, you know, where, what the location is going to be, what is the start date, who's the director, who's the producer, and as the show gets, um, sorry, as the shoot gets planned, you'll just uh, continuously add more information to plan it. Um, another thing that it's very helpful, whether you're using onto air or whether you're using um, the page designer, it's nice to have that one pager of uh, shoot notes um, on the day of or on the morning of to just print out and hand it to all of your staff. It just keeps things, keeps everyone sane. Awesome. Um, yeah, one of the things that, well, the last things I'll mention is because we set up this master contacts base, uh, we can also pull everything in through the synced basis. And that's why it's so convenient to have everything in one place and then you don't have, you know, contact data in three different bases, three different emails, three different companies. We don't know which one's updated. It all lives here. Yeah. Right on. Exactly. Yeah, that's great use of. I mean, that. I, I mean, you've got a business in a box right here amongst <laughs> three different bases. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The analogy I really enjoy and which reminds me of this is, you know, when you're renovating a house you renovate your basement now you have a great home theater and then you look at your kitchen and then you're thinking oh you know what this isn't looking so great anymore so when lots of listeners of the show i'm sure are already using Airtable, um when you are renovating one part of your home or once you've got one team on Airtable, you want to continue that renovation so i think it's great to be able to share Airtable with other teams and just finish your organization's data renovation just like you would with the house. Awesome. Thank you, Cherry, for sharing that. That is awesome. Is this something you're willing to share? Oh, yeah. I'm very happy to share. I'm not okay. going to pub post it publicly, but if yeah. anyone wants this, okay. they can reach out to me via email. Okay. Um, it's just a demo that I set up, so it's not entirely, um, I wouldn't say, functional, yeah. functional to the way that I would be comfortable <laughs> sharing to the world, um, but happy to you know, give this to anyone if they uh, request it via email and just with the caveat that not everything is built out. Okay, great. If you are running a production business and you want your business already created for you, reach out to Cherry and then I'm sure she can also help you customize it specific to your needs. I've worked with Cherry and can definitely give her a thumbs up of great work and um, also have a team. I've interacted with your team and everybody is very great to work with. So we're glad to have you, Cherry, on our show, and we look forward to seeing what else you bring in the Airtable community in the future. Thank you. All right, let's move on. We're getting close. We've still got one more segment, but before we get to Camille, one quick shout out to the Built on Air community. We're still inching towards the goal of 1,000 community members in our Slack. We need just a few more, so I think we're going to do something cool or a bit, make a big announcement once we hit that 1,000 mark. So. We're, we're a few, a uh, couple dozen short. So tell your friends, join us, builtonair.com slash join. That'll get you on the newsletter and in the Slack community. And you can hang out with great folks like us. And I echo Kavan's comment here. Cherry is awesome. Thank you, Kavan. <laughs> Kavan is awesome too. We've collaborated Kavan is awesome with too. before. Yep. Yeah. Yep, very much so. All right, let's end. Camille is going to walk through a project management base. Take it away. 
Okay. Um, so I have, um, I've been toying around in Airtable in trying to make something that is sort of a recreation of what we actually use behind the scenes in uh, the company that I work for, for project management. Um, for my field, or we have different sort of needs for project management than um, I think other uh, typical fields are. So a lot of the uh, programs that are project management based are like focusing on people logging into it like every day to be like, yeah, I worked on this task and all of that kind of stuff. And that's not really what we needed. So um, I spent some time making a sort of generic project management base that um, I thought would put the information that we needed to see uh, right, um, you know, at the forefront. So just to give a quick rundown, there's not a whole lot of tables going on in this space. We have projects, which each have a name. That's just about it. Um, we have tasks and deliverables, which is where most of the information is. And you can see in um, this project, this sort of different types of tasks that I wanted to keep track of. So. We have a major task, which each has a number like one, two, three, four, five, and then each task has a subtask, 1.1, 1.2, et cetera. Um, and then there's different things that are like kind of a task, but more like an event, like a meeting where we have to go out to the public and um, you know talk about the project with the community. And then there's deliverables, which are related to a task, but are more like things that we need to turn in. Um, so these are all different types of things that we wanted to keep track of. And on top of that, what we really wanted was to track the hours that we planned to spend on a task and how many hours we actually spent on the task. So um, that's done by person. So each person knows what they're going to do on, on a task. And it's more like, I have a different billing rate than someone else, um, like the upper management has a different billing rate, et cetera. And we have to plan for how much time is gonna be spent on various tasks. All these numbers are made up. Um, so for instance, for task 1.1 for a particular project, we plan to have person one spend five hours, someone else spend 65 hours, someone else spend 15, and then how much time did we actually spend on those? tasks. Hours to add is a uh, sort of uh, a helper field where um, I just made a simple automation where it will take, if I were to type in, hopefully this automation is still on. If I were to type in eight, this formula adds four plus eight to equal 12. And then hopefully an automation will run to copy this number back to here and turn this off. I don't think that automation is on. Dang it, it's not. <laughs> but the idea was that, so you didn't have to do math um, at some point, like some of these, um, I think one of these test records has a bunch of hours filled in. But yeah, so if you're, if you're doing numbers and you don't wanna like accidentally get the number wrong, um, that is a simple sort of field that I added just for that, mostly for interfaces. Um, when you view this space in an interface. It also has, um, this is something we've talked about on the show before, having a uh, inline bar chart, um, which uses a formula for um, the repeat function to get a green uh, box for the relative percentage that the, prod, uh, that the task had been done. Um, and then the gray box for uh, what's not done. So you can see these tasks weren't started yet, so it's a full gray bar. This one is almost done, so it's mostly green. Um, and I then, <laughs> hmm? I love that. That's such a. It's it's very nice. Um, yeah. It's just a quick visual indicator. Um, and then the last two fields are just based on this person's. Um, based on this person's billing rate, how many hours were planned. So in this case, 54 hours were planned, uh, multiply that together. And then how many hours did they actually spend so far? 49. 
you can see that we're coming close to the budget for that particular task. And then the last table is just people and then the rate for people. Um, I made a couple different interface pages for this. Um, dang it. I made a copy. <laughs> I made a copy of this base and didn't think things through. So a lot of these are th I think are going to be broken. Um, but you can get the general idea of the design of this interface. And I'll maybe next week I'll show what this looks like when things aren't broken. That's a good lesson when you copy bases, the interfaces need to be like relinked. Yeah, you, you have to double check things. I think what happened is I changed what the field people was and it's sort of connected to a bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that you'd be able to select a particular project and then look at that project's total hours planned and then the hours remaining. And then each of the, the projects, um, each of the tasks would have appeared here. And then you would see each of those tasks, subtasks. So for my particular use case, right, we had task one, two, three, four, five, and then task 1.1, task 1.2. Task 1.1 and 1.2 would all be appearing down here. And this uh, bit would have been where I could say, um, this is the number of hours that they had planned and then the number of hours remaining. Um, so the, there's bits about interface designer that I think are missing for me to you know, really put this to good use, um, namely creating, creating this setup for each project is very tedious because if we go back and look at our base, um, I have one record for a project. I have maybe, you know, this one has 23 records for tasks and deliverables and all that. And then if you can imagine, I'm tracking the hours for each person on my team for each task. Okay, well, that means 23 times, I think this base has eight. So there's that many records that I need to create for each project. And there's automations that you can run to sort of create dummy records in there, but it would be great if creating new records in an interface were easy, so I don't have to do all of that. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, a setup that I've been sort of working on. And again, everything is broken right now, but the idea is you'd be able to see all of the tasks that were assigned to you and then how, what, what your budget is if you're close uh, to hitting uh, what's remaining. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you I'm for so, sharing that. I'm so mad that I didn't <laughs> notice that things were broken every time. Oh no. Live demos. Yeah, oh, yeah. no worries. I think you, you can you can get the gist from it there. So awesome, very cool stuff. Is that something once you get fixed that you can share? Um, I think it probably will be. Um, I'll try and make it um, I, a lot of the terms in there are, you know, stuff that if you're an urban planner or an architect or an engineer, you'd be like, yeah, I know what that task is. I, I'll sort of simplify it. Yeah. Guys, cool. I got a another call. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Enjoy. Uh, thanks everyone for being with us. Cherry, thank you so much for joining us. We're so glad to have you on. Camille, as always, great to see you. Mm -hmm. And everybody, thank you for joining us. We will see you again for next week. Until then, we can't wait to see what you've built on there. Take care. See you soon. Thank you for joining today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out our sponsor, ontair.com, and we will see you next time on the Built On Air podcast. <laughs>